The Creator was a movie that when I saw the trailer, I thought just looked really cool. But even I am sad to say this. I'm like, what is this? Is this like a sequel? Is this based on a book, a video game? It's got to be based on something. We've been preconditioned just to think that every single blockbuster is never an original idea. But this one was. And I'm like, oh, interesting. Original idea. But then I kind of got sad. I'm going, this movie's going to tank at the box office. I really hope it doesn't. But I'm like, people are going to be thinking like I was. You know, like, oh, what is this? I don't know what this is. This is, doesn't really interest me. But the robots looked cool, the world looked cool, and an original sci-fi movie, Gareth Edwards is a fairly good director. I'm intrigued, so I went to go see it, and the question still remains, does it suck, or is it worth a watch? Hey guys, my name is Brandon, aka The Brando Critic, and thank you so much for being with me today, I really do appreciate it. And on this channel, I just wanna cut through all the BS of toxic fandom, gatekeeping, and just needless politics and agenda, and just tell you guys honestly what I thought of the movie. This is my honest opinion, but I also wanna know your honest opinion down in the comments section down below. Did you love this movie? Did you hate it? If you haven't seen it, are you looking forward to it? Whatever your thoughts are, leave them down below in the comment section. And also a big thank you to today's video sponsor, Into the AM. I'm actually wearing their merchandise right now. As a six foot eight man, it is extremely hard to find clothes that fit. Into the AM's merch actually does, and it's comfortable and it looks great. My code is down below if you want a discount. Now, Let's get started. So Gareth Edwards is our director and he did such films as Godzilla, Rogue One. I'm gonna assume that most people have seen Rogue One who have seen this channel before. And he also did a film called Monsters. And our cast includes John David Washington, Gemma Chan, Ken Watanabe, Alison Janney, and newcomer Madeline Yuna Voiles. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But the story, and when I was writing down my little story notes, I was actually surprised at how much detail I actually went into because like, this is a brand new story. It's not just like, oh, another adventure with Indiana Jones. Oh, it's another Marvel movie. So the story here is that AI beings are now among us and a nuclear weapon is detonated over Los Angeles and the American government blame AI. So the Americans wage war on all AI beings. None are allowed, they are banned. However, New Asia actually likes the new AI and really incorporates them into their culture. So there really is a war between New Asia and the Americans. But our main character comes into play with Joshua Taylor. He is an American military guy. And he embarks on a mission to find this super weapon that the AI have created and to find his long lost wife. So what did I think of this movie? This is one of the most gorgeous movies I think I've ever seen. And honestly, I could have watched just two and a half hours of establishing shots in this movie. I thought that every single frame felt like a painting. It is a beautifully shot movie. And I just love the world that this movie creates. Now, I'll talk about that in a minute, but the special effects, I wanted to bring those up because it's very rare for me, and I feel like a lot of people feel this way, for special effects to really wow us. Of course, CGI really came into being in like the you know late 80s, early 90s, and then it was everywhere. And then of course, they just kept on pushing the boundaries of what technology could do. But now you see it everywhere. It's in Star Wars, it's in Marvel, it's in all these big blockbusters, and it's really hard to be impressed by it anymore. Avatar The Way of Water, I still think is the best looking CGI I've ever seen. But I gotta be honest guys, I think the creator is like right up there. And it's the movie since Avatar The Way of Water that really made me go, oh my God, this movie looks unbelievable in terms of the CGI, the special effects. And people will talk about this in every single review that you'll see on the internet. This movie has a budget of like 80 million. And I'm thinking how in the world does this look better than a movie that you know costs like $250 million to make? Like before this movie, I saw the trailer for the Marvels. God, does that look like junk, complete junk. It looks so terrible. And again, I haven't seen the movie yet, so I can't say if it's good or bad, but man, I am not looking forward to that movie because it just looks terrible. And I'm looking at that, I'm going like the CGI in this looks so much better than it does in the Marvels because honestly, I don't think there's actually that much of it in this movie. It's used very sparingly and just the way that they're able to incorporate it into the real life locations is just marvelous. Like the movie is so beautiful. But getting into the world building, it's unreal. Like it's completely unreal because you have things like the backstory, you have the lore, you have the tech, everything is fully realized and it's original. The fact that this is original just feels so refreshing in a world of sequels and reboots and prequels and cinematic universes, just having a movie that is not based on anything, having this brand new world completely built from the ground up for this movie, like it's just, so refreshing to see, honestly. And getting back to what I was talking about with like the box office for this movie, I really don't know how it's gonna play out. And really for most movies, I don't care, but I really hope that this movie is does not go underlooked. And I feel like the normies, like the casuals, not people like you and me, the people who just wanna go see a movie just to kind of like pass the time, I think they're just gonna write this off. 
and I, I really hope that they don't. Now, I actually watched an interview with Gareth Edwards talking about his inspiration for the movie and inspiration for the look and the tech for this movie. And he talks about Blade Runner, talks about Star Wars, you know, pretty obvious standard sci-fi stuff. But then he talked about 80s Sony products. And I go, 80s Sony products? Interesting. And there is this one piece of gear in the movie. It's like a translator. It really does look like a Sony like 80s Walkman, like a portable cassette player. And I'm going, you know what? That is why this movie stands out. This is why this movie has a voice. It feels unique because it's not just futuristic for the sake of looking futuristic. I think of like the Marvel's trailer. I'm like, this just looks boring. This movie has a world that feels fully lived in. It's got personality to it. It's like you take the world from the 1980s and then what that version of the future might look like. Of course, you have like retro futurism when you have like the Jetsons, like that's like what the 50s thought that the future would look like. So it's not just futuristic from today's standards. It's futuristic from like a 1980s perspective. I think that's just so genius and it looks so interesting and different than what you'd normally see in a sci-fi action blockbuster today. Hell, it even starts off with a 1940s slash 50s like newsreel, which I thought was just like shades of Paul Verhoeven, like perfect. And then of course, when you see like the political speeches, it's like this grainy film, it feels old. And like, I just love that this movie goes down that angle. It's not just futuristic for the sake of being futuristic. You know what I mean? The design of the AI, the ships, the cities, the weapons, and the sound is just, man, it really does all come together. And you can tell that Gareth Edwards really had a vision in mind and you can really see it on screen. And speaking about the sound, Hans Zimmer's score, like it's it's subtle and I believe film stocked said something kind of similar to this where it's like I didn't even know it was Hans Zimmer during the score and I'm going you know what that's actually a really interesting score like there's some really good moments in it and I'm gonna be listening to that score quite a bit afterwards and that's the thing I love when a movie's music just really immerses me in the world and of course John Williams has been the master of this right Star Wars Indiana Jones Harry Potter I mean Jurassic Park Superman right but then, of course, Hans Zimmer's been a master at this too. Pirates of the Caribbean, Gladiator, The Dark Knight. And I just love when a movie score really does immerse you into the movie. When I, I feel like that hasn't really happened in a long time. Of course, you had Avatar The Way of Water. You had Top Gun and The Batman to a certain extent last year. But again, I just miss that golden age of movie soundtracks because I don't feel like we have those really much anymore. O Oppenheimer got there as well, I should say that. So from a style perspective, just the look and the feel of this movie like top notch, really just amazing stuff. But I also wanna talk about the action sequences. And this is something that Gareth Edwards really knows how to do. He knows how to execute those exciting moments extremely well. They feel big, they feel important, they feel dangerous. And that's the thing, feeling. It's not like I'm just watching a bunch of CGI junk on screen, just, you know, like you don't feel anything when that happens. You just see, okay, this is just a bunch of people in, you know, computer lab creating these CGI images. And yes, there's CGI in this movie, but that's the thing, it feels tangible. It's wonderful stuff. And he knows how to work with scale. Of course, when you have Rogue One, you have the Death Star. Of course, when you have Godzilla, you have Godzilla. These massive things in the movie. He really knows how to play with the scale. He knows how to put people in the foreground, put people in the background to actually make it feel larger than life. And a lot of things in this movie are larger than life. So it feels very cinematic. There's one shot, and I hope that it's in the trailer so I can show you guys. It's where the one AI robot is like dinging a bell to kind of like warn the village that these other people are coming to attack. I don't know what it is, but it just gives me the chills. It gives me like, oh my God, danger is coming. We got to really be invested in what's happening in the story. I don't know. It, it kind of taps into that like eight-year-old kid going, oh my God, what's going to happen next? Which happens less and less and less with new blockbusters, which is unfortunate. Now, I do want to address one piece of criticism that I've been seeing for the movie, and that is that it's not really the most original movie. And like, I understand where they're coming from, but I really think it's kind of a stupid argument. Now, here's their argument, right? Oh, the cities are just like Blade Runner. Oh, the architecture, the ships, the weapons, they're just right out of Star Wars. And there's no lightsaber. I will admit that if there were like lightsabers or laser swords in this movie, then yes, they really do have a point. But they, there's no lightsabers, I promise. The AI robots, they look like Chappie. There's an airlock scene, minor spoiler, I guess. There's an airlock scene, just right out of Alien, right? There's this one piece of tech with like these giant octopus arms, just like Spider-Man 2. And there's a lot of political red tape, just like District 9. And I get that, you know, these things are similar, but like, who cares? Like, do you guys not know how inspiration works? Like, if you just completely took it 
and didn't change anything of it. I understand that. And there are a couple sci-fi movies that have, you know, different themes about AI and artificial intelligence and have spaceships and have the futuristic world and there's a big bomb that goes off. Like, I, I get it, but then again, if you're gonna go down that angle, then you can't watch Lion King because, oh, it's just like Hamlet. You can't watch Star Wars. Oh, that, that's the Hidden Fortress. That's Kurosawa. You know what I mean? Like, there's only so many stories you can tell. What matters to me is that if you tell it well, and you tell it with like a new coat of paint. Yes, Avatar is Dances with Wolves, but you gotta admit that that's a pretty different coat of paint for that movie. Also guys, if you guys are liking this video so far, hit the like button, I'd really appreciate it. Now, this movie is not perfect. I wouldn't call this movie a masterpiece. There is a weak link in this movie, and unfortunately, Rogue One has that very same weak link the characters. Unfortunately, this movie does not have interesting characters. They are likable enough. They have good actors in this movie and you want to see our characters succeed, but they are not the most interesting. I, I can't argue that. John David Washington has leading man charm, has leading man charisma, but I gotta admit though that he is not, again, the most fleshed out character. He's not gonna be going down in sci-fi history as one of the great protagonists. He's no Ellen Ripley. He's no Luke Skywalker. He's no Captain Kirk. He's no Sarah Connor. And he's no Rick Deckard. Just, he doesn't have that level of complexity to him. Not to say that the other characters are complex, but they have more layers. Madeline Univoyles is awesome in this movie. She gives a phenomenal performance. And again, when you have a kid in the movie, it can be very, very dangerous because it's like, you don't wanna to be too annoying. You don't wanna be just too, you know, kids are not the best actors. Not all of them anyways. She's really good in this movie. So yes, she's impressive, but I will admit that I didn't necessarily care for her character. The movie didn't really give me a big reason to or give me enough time to. I cared about her because she was like this kid who didn't really know any better in this world that everyone is going after her, right? So again, you're kind of feeling like, oh, I want to care for this kid, sure, but I feel like there's there's more there. There's definitely more potential with her character. Same with Gemma Chan's character. Maya is her name and her relationship with Joshua Taylor, our main character. It falls into the Anakin Padme thing. Now there's no cringy one-liners like I don't like sand or any of that crap, but their relationship is the real emotional driver for the movie. The whole reason why our main character is going on this mission in the first place is because he wants to rekindle that love and find his wife who was presumed to be dead. I guess that's a minor spoiler, but that's just the overall plot of the movie. And like Rogue One, the main driver in that movie being between Jin Erso and her father, Galen Erso, it's so surface level. We're told about their relationship and we barely see it. We see a few flashbacks here and there. We have one scene of them kind of hanging out in their house. That's about it. So it's like, okay, there's like this big emotional moment between them. Quite a few like, oh my God, no, I can't live without you kind of thing. And I'm thinking to myself, you know what? This scene would really be hitting harder if I actually cared about these people. I don't like think they're annoying by any means, but there's more there that needs to be fully realized. I mean, the world is, but the characters in it are not the most interesting. They're pretty flat. And of course, that's a problem when the overall story is meandering from location to location. You got to find this thing to find this thing to find this person who knows the location of this thing. You know, standard sci-fi movie plot stuff, right? Like the structure of this movie, it's nothing new. Like that's the one thing that is completely not original. But again, like name me one big blockbuster that really turned everything on its head. Yes, there are some out there, but not many, right? And the creator doesn't really bring anything new to the table in terms of like story twists, you know what I mean? And I'm thinking to myself throughout the entire movie, this movie would be so much more engaging if I really felt for the characters, if I really was emotionally invested in their struggle. So does this movie suck or is it worth a watch? Well, overall, the story and the characters are the weak link in the movie. I'm sorry to say that. They're definitely not as strong as I want. And sure, if you want to be a you can talk about how this movie isn't fully original, but this was a really great experience watching a new science fiction movie in the theater. Will it hold up in future viewings? I'm not too sure because again, the novelty of this new world will wear off and then all you have is the character drama and that wasn't there to begin with. But the fact that I even want to watch this movie again is a very good sign. So for an overall rating, I'm gonna give this movie a four out of five. I'm really happy that I could say that. I was hoping that I was just gonna see something new and fresh and exciting, and the creator is exactly that. If you wanna see more videos just like this, then definitely hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. And I also wanna shout out my Patreon members. You guys are awesome. If you guys wanna join us for monthly movie nights, then the link is down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys again soon. Take care.